What's that? Um, <clears throat> Pixels Want to Be Free was the title of a conference I went to years ago in Berlin. It was a VJ conference and people came to um, talk about how to put pixels and media and content not on screens but in this case inside clubs. And um, it really stuck with me, like not having a background in visual effects, cinema, TV commercials, to suddenly be making stuff that doesn't go on screens but all the way around you was really quite a, an eye-opener um, and from that point I kind of been searching ways and other ways of using the skills that I'd learned in VFX but using them in the real world or other worlds. Um, kicked off a few years ago, ages ago actually, I did a collaboration with a mate and he was a sculptor and he made things out of old farm machinery, sort of diesel punk styles and I was mucking around with cameras and light and computers and things and so we try to work out what we can collaborate with and it came up with a time machine. Um, and so it turned out to be a series of these mirrors that were spinning and uh, you had a series of pulleys and V-belts and all sorts of things that he cobbled together and then the time travellers would stand there and turning this big uh, wheel and that would turn the mirrors. And on the back of each mirror was, it's a bit like this, um, mirror on one side and was white on the other side and we set up a bunch of well, a couple of projectors either side of this time machine and that presented the time traveler's image from a camera onto these spinning mirrors so it looked really trippy because you're seeing a kaleidoscope of your own face getting smashed around all of these different mirrors but then also an image from a camera going up there as well and it's kind of hard to know what was going on but then the trick came with a um, the camera feed went through a computer and we had a little lever that you could pull and that put a uh, buffered the imagery so it would go back and forward in time so it could actually delay the images so then you're looking at yourself you're looking at yourself reflected and then you're seeing yourself from five seconds ago or 10 seconds ago or walking into the room and sometimes the computer would fuck out because it's really um, new tech and it would play somebody from an hour ago or a day ago and it was really trippy but it was really cool to use a combination of physical stuff and digital stuff and projection and I mean it all coming together like one just the object by itself or just the media by itself didn't really tell that story but when it all came together just gotta take a breath I'm going too fast um, that kind of that project weirdly and quite directly led to the next major kind of project we did um, which was the Rugby World Cup opening ceremony there's a snippet of it there so this was a case of putting heaps of projectors around Eden Park and projecting onto the show that happened when they opened back in 2012 and um, so partly the one of the points is really important to do those quite trippy off-grid projects that you've got no idea where it's going to go but it turned into a, another really major um, thing which was the World Cup but that 
kind of worked because again, it was a similar thing in that it was combining all of the theatrics on the field, all of the singing and dancing and, and all of that show stuff, but also this layer of projection and layer of media. And again, coming together and joining forces was way more exciting than any of the um, individual parts. So that kind of sent us on this road um, down kind of projection mapping, which has sort of exploded a wee while ago. And lots of buildings, lots of, lots of all sorts of things we got um, asked to do. I think the weirdest one, we got had to um, project people's faces in real time onto these big hottie balloons floating around inside warehouses. And, and that was a nightmare to do because none of the tech actually worked. And so we had to somehow a GoPro rig on these people's heads that put their face on the balloon. It was a weird idea. But um, we ended up doing that one by having a, um, a mirror. The only way all of the tech solutions and really expensive high tech solutions all just failed. Um, but we put a mirror in front of a projector and the GoPro rig fed into the projector and then on a tripod with a long stick. So I was moving the stick around, tracking them in real time as their faces locked onto it. But um, so yeah, all sorts of different places and ways of getting pixels are definitely outside of the rectangle. Um, one of the building projects that we did was for Nelson Light Festival. And a lot of the show is a lot of the building projection mapping is. It's kind of a narrative linear process, of lots of whiz bangy effects and graphics and things. But um, one of the ones I was really fond of here, we filmed the um, building a couple of days before and did a time lapse of it. So we filled sun up to sun down and then projected that onto the building and got all the optics right so it looked like it was just projection mapped with itself. But then as the sun's going down on show night, the um, sun setting, so Nelson is getting darker and darker, but this building wasn't. And it was really weird because this one building's standing out and the sunset's not affecting it. And so it's that kind of illusion that you can create by combining the physical world and the digital world. And then once the, the sun went completely down, then we pushed play and then the time lapse kicked off. And it was like really weird because you're seeing time affecting this building differently from all the other buildings. And it was, it was quite fun. Um, yeah, that's, I guess, one of the themes I want to talk about is the possibilities of um, illusion that can happen with projection mapping, but also um, any form of getting pixels into the real world. We've been doing a, a quite a lot of, and you're probably aware of the explosion in virtual production that's happening now. Uh, the film industry is just changing completely. The visual effects industry is changing completely because green screen is still there, but you can just put an LED wall in. Um, an example of how trippy that can get was a few years ago we were doing some stuff for Evil Dead and had a uh, bunch of projectors and rear projection screens behind these cars. We are having lunch and um, I remember looking back into the studio and going, shit, this is burning because they, they look like there's a little smoke coming out of the um, car and the forest was on fire. Kind of forgot I'd left the projections on and that was the media, but I'd actually tricked myself into thinking that the whole set was on fire. It does ride that line and when you cross that line, it's the most exciting thing. It's way more, it's a different thing than watching a film or a traditional narrative. It's like you actually do believe you're there and I guess that's the goal and we were trying to get to. Um, so in terms of the content, which is I guess mainly what we're here for, I'm kind of torn in two ways at the moment because things are changing real quick. We've pretty much established that pixels no longer have to exist within squares or rectangles or TVs, but then how do you make them, how do you create them? And that's changing real quick. Um, I've got a foot in both camps, both the real and the generated, but the real, um, real and capturing and cinematic stuff is getting really fun. I mean, our journey in that kicked off quite a few years ago. We did a project for the Wellington uh, Museum and they wanted to represent 12 billion years of Wellington stories. But because it's a museum, we didn't want to just show a film or you can do that on YouTube or in a cinema, that it needed to be a physical thing. And what seemed to serve that story best was another theme coming through. It was another time machine. Um, so what we ended up doing for them was spent quite a bit of quite a big chunk of the resource into making the space because if you can get people to believe that what they're seeing is a reality it's it's just another level than just watching a film or watching a, a, a bunch of media and so we built this kind of contraption like a tesla inspired 18th century time machine and luckily wellington museum in the um 
attic up there was a beautiful old 100 year old building. So we built this con con contraption and then filmed on 180 degree lenses. Oh, five minutes, oh shit, that's gone fast. Um, stuff that goes all the way around. And then um, filmed it optically so it looked like you're looking right at the person. And it did, it kind of created that, every now and again created that illusion that it's, you're looking at somebody and you're not, and you're looking and the premise of the physical object gave you the sense that it's actually traveling through space and time. More time in that one. And that's kind of happened quite a lot, a lot more of that is kicking off today. Um, quite timely, we've just opened a thing at the Rugby Museum. So if you thoroughly recommend going and having a look at Sky City, there's, for that one, we needed to put the audience or the visitors in front of the All Blacks. Because one of the things we're all just capturing is, yeah, you can do it, but it's like in the, in the early days, trains were exciting for cinema. You've got to get those cameras into really exciting places, because otherwise it's going to be boring as batshit. And um, one of those cool places was five metres in front of the All Blacks before they were about to do a haka. And terrifying to do, the logistics were a nightmare, but that's a different speech. But um, the, that one's open for now, and, and it still sends shivers down the spine, because when you're standing five metres of them, and they're, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And a similar one that you can go and see down at the Spark Race Zone is putting those same cameras, 360 cameras, um, on an America's Cup boat. So for, we filmed a training run. So it allows people to get into places that they can't normally go to. And I think that's one of the exciting things is if you're gonna be filming this VR, is like where can you go to really push the envelope and get your audience to go somewhere that is a really privileged or unique position. The other one, I've got my foot in two sides of it, is digital. And the world of digital content creation is just going mental. Um, Kind of terrifying because everything I learned and was good at five years ago is gone <laughs> and you're going to continually learn new stuff but the good thing is the new stuff's getting easier and cheaper and better. Um, I spend a lot of time in Unreal Engine now and that's just mind-blowing. What used to take months takes minutes um, and if you, any of you go to the gym we've done a bunch of stuff with Les Mills and I've actually worked out that if you're when you're riding your bike for the spin glasses and if you're distracted by looking at immersive material, in this case the worlds that we build for them, then you don't care about your really sore knee or the fact that you're <laughs> smashing your body because you're there and your, your mind's totally occupied. Um, and so yeah, we're, we're embarking it on another one of those journeys at the moment where the kind of, the thing is to make these um, immersive worlds and the tools I guess rounding up is the, where we're at now is the potential for illusion and for taking people to places that they're not normally in is just getting more and more exciting and the doors are, are, um, are really opening up. So now that the pixels have become free, we're trying to work out ways to actually create some rules for them again because everything that we did now is all gone and we're going to come up with a whole new set of um, yeah rules that are just slotted into my 15 minutes. <laughs> Thanks.